Good morning, gorgeous. It's great to see you. It's lovely to be out here with the birds and the flowers. It's kind of, you know, it's all happening here. So let me just show you. And you can listen. So there's the circle garden with all its bulbs coming out and the yellow ones being a bright spot on the right side. And you can see we have an early cineraria and the terrace garden has got, oh, I've just noticed this, these are really small daffodils. This one's been chewed, but there it is, really teeny tiny daffodils. So they're coming out, um, which is very exciting. It's always exciting when the teeny tiny daffodils come out. And these are the antique daffodils. This one was kind of chewed, but there's more. So, um, you know, the daffodils always come after the jonquils. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Nora. So we've got tons and tons of Granny's Bonnet up there. Just, you know, that hasn't really started yet. They'll come away with a whoosh like fireworks. And, of course, this is what's really happening is all of this. So here it is. We're doing the John Quill walk. And um, you can see that the magnolia is really starting to happen now. It's just beautiful with its pink buds that open up into these soft pink blossoms. And uh, we'll get a bit closer. And you see there's a mix. Good morning, Julian. There's a mix of flowers. And you can see why it's called a star magnolia. Because it looks kind of like a star, even though it's fluffy and fluffy and sort of soft. That's a star magnolia for you. And um, here no flakes there's so many flowers and they're still coming out a bunch of them and there's a later bunch of jonquils there it's all growing good morning Roberta and um, well need I say more we just have jonquils 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 and jonquils and jonquils and it's really nice that there are so many of them They've grown over many years now to be like this. Let's just get up close and delicious with the early chair. Come on, give us some focus. Come on, camera, sort it out. You can do it. It's waiting for us to get some sharp focus on the, the it's trying. It's too beautiful to, to not get this right. Try that. There we go. Now you can see it. It's just beautiful. The camera is always, you know, it averages the distances that it's looking at. And so you have to get rid of everything else. So there we go. There's the early chair and the soldiers and sailors is all coming out. Um, and I just love this little corner. We have these blue flowers and the long daffodil foliage, jonquil foliage. And then you have the native cochula and the soldiers and sailors. And it's this beautiful mixture of foliage. Oh, and look, we have a random um, ah, blue bell except a white bell there as well so this is just a lovely little corner that I really enjoy see they're coming up there's a whole heap of them back there it's a beautiful time of the year so there it is this is the and it's a beautiful day the sky is blue once you can get up to look at it, and there's very little in it, apart from the moon. So there we are. This is the morning. So, today, today I want to talk about love. And I want to talk about love because our conversation last week, um, one of you made a really good comment about, well, you know, love's this grand thing, but... I got so kind of beaten up and disillusioned and everybody that I was loving on was like not loving me back and in fact the more I loved the less I received and now I don't even know what the hell love is anymore um, and I thought well that's a really good conversation to have because you know what is love and I promise I'm not going to get all philosophical about it because I'm really not a philosopher I'm interested in experience I want to have the experience of overwhelming ha, 
heart-filling, amazing love. I'm much more interested in that than I am in talking about it or knowing about it. I want to experience it. So, you know, love. And when I was thinking about the conversation last week, the conclusion I came to, is not new to me, but it's like, okay, how am I going to frame this? Is that it's terribly easy and habitual and normal, and we talked about this last week, for humans in general to think that love has got a lot to do with suffering and struggle and sacrifice. Um, and bear in mind that there's a really good evolutionary reason for this. You know, if you're a cave a, a, a cave person, I can't say a cave man, you might be a cave woman. Um, or a cave person who's non-binary, anything's possible. Um, but, you know, how many 50,000, 100,000 million years ago, whatever it was, if you have a primitive male and a primitive female of the species and they have young, they have children, and they're living in a cave... Remember, you know, the child is born, the mother bonds with the child, and there's oxytocin that's involved in that and a whole lot of other hormones. There's a very chemical thing that goes on when a child is born. Morning, Jen! Um, and that bonding is, first of all, about keeping the child safe because we're bonded. Um, we want to preserve the life of the child. And so love becomes very connected to survival right and then the father wants to protect the mother because the father also hopefully is is in some way connected to bonded to the mother now that might be just by a very basic you know she's my mate i'm getting really basic i'm going back however many thousand years it was Berna, good morning but the point being is that it is programmed into our bodies and our brains to behave like this and to fairly easily mix up love or put love in the same place as um, sacrifice or needing to defend or needing to protect all of that. Yeah, being in love, oh, that whole in love thing is just, ah, being love definitely frees you. Yes, and really good distinction, Linda. So from an evolutionary point of view, love gets mixed up with sacrifice and protection and duty and obligation and all of that stuff. And my experience of love is a bit different because like most of you, if not all of you, I think we've all had this experience one way or another, we've all had the experience of giving too much, of really opening, no I'm not going to say that, of really giving our heart to something or someone, you know, you just, oh, I love you, I care about you, and not receiving enough back, right? Not Now, how do I say not receiving enough back? I mean that it feels unbalanced. I mean that there is something about that interaction that makes you think, this isn't working for me. Now, that's not actually selfish, it's just a fact, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Whatever the reason, you know, and you might look back on a time when you were thinking this relationship isn't working for me, and think, well, gee, I was being a real shit. Um, bear in mind that if you were being a real shit at that time, it's probably because you were feeling really unwhole. You were feeling really unloved. And so you were expressing what was inside you in the context of a relationship, which then is like, oh, this is how I love people. Oh, gee, might that be an expression of how much I do or don't love myself? So, you know, right about then... If how we love others is actually about how we love ourselves, suddenly the whole evolutionary program is kind of hung out to dry a bit because now it's not about protecting the child or the spouse or the cave or, you know, the territory or whatever, which all gets hooked up with it from an evolutionary programming point of view. Suddenly it's about how do I relate with myself and how do I relate with others because how I relate with others is reflecting how I relate with myself. Oh my God, that could be a bit... Ah! Um, and so I too sort of probably didn't think about it that clearly. Oh no, I did. I just, I just have a better... I think about it, I have the same thought, you know, how I relate to others is how I relate to myself. It's just I have greater understanding of what that means to me now. Back when I didn't really, it was like, well, geez, you know, it must mean that I don't love myself. 
must mean that a whole lot of things. Um, and so, love, okay. To really experience love, if it's not about another person, because that other person is only ever going to reflect to me how much I do or don't love myself, then how in heck do I love myself more so that other people can love me more? Is that really what I'm saying? And I thought I did love myself. I thought I was being nice to me. What? You know, and it's kind of like this brain scrambling moment in cognitive dissonance where you think, hang on a minute, I thought that one plus two equaled three, but now one plus two seems to be equaling minus six, and I don't get it. And that's actually a really good thing, because if you don't get it, if you're confused where before you thought you knew which way was up, then you've gone somewhere new. You are no longer in the land of the familiar and what you know. And that means you have an opportunity to have a new experience. So relax if you're confused or if you're feeling disoriented or even, ah, because, you know, something's changed. And that opens up more opportunities. Sanchia, good morning. Um, so, you know, how do I change how I relate to myself, how I love to myself enough that more love can get to me? More love is in terms of more life, more abundance, more health, more happiness, more purpose, more whatever it is that you think you, you need outside of you to feel better inside of you. If that's just, you know, everything outside of me is a reflection of me, um, then how do I change this inside me? Elizabeth, good morning. How do I do that? So I'm going to get all scientific on you again and check the clock. Because this is what I found. And this is what I actually do. And this is how I connect to love. Literally, every day. And it changes me. It comes down to with brain coherence. Linda, good morning. It started with learning how to open my focus. Because for a long time, I did not really realize that my heart was slammed shut. And I didn't know how to open it anyway. Um, and I had to learn that. And I'm getting a lot better at that now. Do you know people take up with someone? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, lots of people do the B to BTN better than nothing. Absolutely, because it's too scary and they don't know how to face themselves. And I wouldn't have known either because I didn't have the tools, right? But now I do. So this business of opening my focus so that my brain can become coherent and also my brain waves can slow down so I'm no longer trapped in those circling, looping cycles of unpleasant, unhappy thoughts about how difficult everything is and, you know, whatever it is that you find yourself habitually thinking when you're not paying attention. The ability to turn that off and become really quiet and still in my mind... Um, opens me up to more possibility. That's the first thing. That is brain coherence. And for me, brain coherence actually came first. Everybody's different, so don't assume it'll be like that for you. Um, the other thing I had to learn was heart coherence. And heart coherence has taken me longer. Heart coherence has been the ability to put my awareness into my heart, like literally into, you know, the, the heart centre, the centre of your chest. You tap on your breastbone, it's there. Um, and your heart's behind that. And there's the thymus gland, which is um, totally hooked up with your immune system. And when you put your awareness in the heart centre, you're also putting awareness around the thymus and it, you know, it, it zhuzhes it up. And my immune system is so much healthier than it was 18 months ago. It's amazing. Um, so, you know... You put your attention there and you start breathing in and out of it. This is how you create heart coherence. And we practiced it before. We might do it again. Um, and then, crazy of crazy of how the hell do I do this when I was first starting, you actually start to generate positive, elevated emotions for no reason. For no reason at all. And that was like, are you mad? For a very long time for me. So I've been practicing different ways of doing this and practicing staying in that state for longer periods of time, for quite some time now. And what that's meant is that it's changed my brain 
changed my physiology, heck yeah. I've had things that I've had for many years go away or be in the process of going away. It's amazing. Changes how your biology expresses itself when you do this work consistently. Um, so along the, the physical healing is a side effect. But one of the things that happens one way or another is that every day now I connect with greater and greater levels of wholeness. Now what's wholeness and why do I keep on boobling on about wholeness and what's wholeness got to do with love? Well when my brain is coherent the two hemispheres of my brain are communicating with each other and the front of my brain and the back of my brain that's talking to each other and you know all the different parts of my brain start to hook up and connect community. My brain literally becomes more whole, it becomes more coordinated, it communicates better. And when my brain gets like that, I feel whole. And in that state of wholeness, it really is bliss. And I cannot want for anything. And I feel no lack and I feel the most intense um, real, genuine love. And it's indescribable. you just got to feel it. And nobody can give it to you, you see. Nobody can do this for you. Um, you know, there are experiences you can have with plant medicine and psychedelic drugs which mimic this experience because of what they do with the neurotransmitters in the brain. But then, you know, the first time it's amazing because the neurotrans because the receptors in the brain have never had that experience of that much dopamine or whatever it is hitting them. But then the next time they're a bit deadened and you've got to go harder and the next time they're a bit harder and that's how addiction happens. Um, this way, I get to produce my own chemistry and create the experience every time myself. And some days it's bigger and more amazing than others, but it's always beautiful. And I always come back more whole and that doesn't go away and I still have life happening to me I still have challenges I still have questions I still have ah moments I no longer have ah weeks or days nah because I want that state of being, see, I want to go back or I want to stay in that space as much as I can. Why would I give up that feeling to be resentful at somebody or to be angry at someone? And I catch myself sometimes starting an old thought about a person or a memory or whatever. I think, hang on a minute, Matt, if you go into that, you're going to screw up your state. Um, do you want to feel as good as you've been feeling or do you want to run that old program? And the answer is hell no. I don't want that old bullshit program. It's irrelevant. It was 10, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Anyway, I'd rather keep feeling like this. Yeah, wholeness does absolutely mean that I've completed myself. And the thing is, when I have completed myself, when I am whole, my brain's working more holistically, right? So that means it functions better. I'm more efficient. I download information. I get solutions. I communicate better. It all just happens more easily. I get more done. Answers arrive that I never would have accessed if I was in my old fearful, anxious state. Forget it. Just not able to get in because my brain is in this holistic, coherent state. And I feel better because I'm getting better and better at staying heart-centered. I get bumped out of it, but I started, you know, I got inspired by Joe because he says, you know, I probably practice this 50 times a day when I'm brushing my teeth, when I sit down to eat my food, when I, you know, I just want to be in the habit of opening my heart. Now, I'm not particularly good at that yet, but I have managed to tie it to brushing my teeth. So when I brush my teeth, I, sooner or later, I remember, oh, yeah, I want to be opening my heart now. And I just, because I don't stand at the, um, I don't stand at the, the, the sink and do it. I actually walk around the house because I find standing there boring. Do you, done it. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> so I walk and I brush my teeth and I practice opening my heart. And I'm getting better at it. I notice in my meditations I'm really connecting to this amazing feeling of opening my heart to more love, really. And, you know, right at the end of, of today's meditation, we're really surrendering to love. Um, and I was aware that there was an enormous amount of love that wanted to get through to me. 
But it was like a little trick. It was like, well, I know there's more. It's like, yeah, that's all you can accept right now. Oh. i got to practice that. <laughs> I've got to practice that. Um, so, I mean, of course I'm going to do that tomorrow because I want more of this. It's so, you know, <laughs> what word are you going to use? <laughs> it's love. It's not tied to anybody or anything. It's just what I create. It is beautiful. It's so beyond beauty. It's so beyond description. It's so beyond anything that you can possibly say. But this is what we all have the ability to do and be for ourselves. And when you open your eyes and you come out of that, it's changed my brain, it's changed my body, it's changed who I am. And therefore, because who I am creates my life, I'm now living a different life. And man, am I living a different life to how I was 18 months ago. It really does work like that. So, you know, love isn't about sacrifice. It's not about difficulty. It's not about, oh, I've just got to do this so, you know, that person will keep on being nice to me or whatever. No, that is not love. Love is becoming whole. And then your life becomes whole around you because you generate your life. That's how it works. There's no escape from it. And it's like, well, once you realize that and you learn how to change change how you're generating your life, it's like, woohoo, I generate my life. Woohoo, I'm not subject to everybody else's shit. So, you know, it's like, oh God, I generate my life. But yeah, you do and you can. And this is how. Coherent brain, coherent heart makes you whole. You feel love. Big love. I'm going to see you with bells on tomorrow. Bye-bye.